And we are alive. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Wherever, whatever in case it is. I don't see you, good is. afternoon, good evening, and good night. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. One of the classics. <laughs> mm, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but, we uh, are we are yeah. on today to play some Call of Cthulhu. Oh. Uh, we will be playing uh, with the 7th Ed, the newest version, as far as I know, unless there's something crazy going on out there. And we're going to be doing a an adventure that uh, my wife is actually creating called The Language of Flowers. So this will be the first playthrough of the adventure. Uh, and the two um, walking corpses, I mean players, uh, will be joining us here. We'll go over with them in just a second. So we'll be playing 1920s Detroit uh, and rumping around uh, kind of the uh, southeast of uh, Michigan and having some fun around there. Uh, and with that, uh, why don't we kind of get started? But why don't uh, we have you two kind of go through your characters a little bit, and then we can get started. So why don't uh, Fives, you go first, and then Armadillo, you can go a second. Sure. My character is uh, the one Clarence Clyde Williamson, a uh, little bit of a small town boy out of wisconsin who is currently residing in the uh, lower chicago as fate would have it he's stands a little on the taller side about six foot three he's also on the silver side of middle-aged at 50 years old an average weight 220 pounds for being a six foot three guy he's a little bit wirier a little bit lankier but he's definitely got some strength about him because you can tell by his scarred and overused overworked hands he's got some chipped fingertips from what looks to be hard hard labor and he runs with salt and pepper hair uh bushy but kept beard which is interesting because we were just talking about beard oil and grooming and he's of moderate means so you never see him wearing a flash coat and leather jackets he's much more of a, a duster and fedora man much more of the classic 20s era and you may or may not smell a whiff of smoke about him as he does seem to enjoy lighting up like most people did in the 1920s. But that is Clarence Clyde Williamson that you would catch at a glance. Awesome. Thank you. And Armory Dillo? Uh, yes, I am playing a walking corpse. Uh, <laughs> you stand at a very hefty uh, 150 pound of decomposing flesh. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I will be playing Paul Wallace, um, as his uh, professional name is. Uh, Pavel Walczak uh, is a, uh, a sort of average build uh, in terms of uh, height and weight. He's probably only like 160 pounds, 170 pounds, 5'9", um, 5'10", five, five, um, son of uh, Polish immigrants and uh, in Detroit to uh, help uh, extra family that have come over recently. Uh, and moved to Detroit for some of those um, employment opportunities. Um, he is just a not a not a, a face only a mother could love these days. Um, Paul is a professional boxer, but has just absolutely a messed up face, cauliflower ears, uh, nose broken so many times that uh, you got more you know more switchbacks on that nose than a mountain pass. Um, and uh, he's he's wiry. He's got the build, though. He probably fights at a uh, welterweight, maybe. Um, but um, he is got the build uh, in a slightly more compact size, and um, is from the greatest city on the planet, New York City, baby. <laughs> I love it. So we might have some trouble with some small town boys here. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, no. So the one thing I, I forgot to ask, so for each of you, um, typically you have kind of a, a means about you uh, in Cthulhu. So I know, Clarence, you do a lot of, you know, stonework and stuff like that. And Paul, you kind of have your, 
your kind of boxing going on. Do you guys have your own places? Do you have, uh, you know, uh, like a, a art studio, that type of stuff? I think, um, yeah. So for Clarence, he probably lives in like, I think I'm thinking 20s, like starving artists, but not not quite starving. So I'm thinking he's probably got a loft with a roommate. Um, in, you know, Chicago, so very urban setting. And uh, sharing the space and sharing the rent makes it easier for him to take care of his mom, who was in, was it Grand Rapids? Uh, so a little mm -hmm. bit outside of Chicago. Um, and she's in, you know, he's he's got her hold up because, of course, his dad passed away, right? So I think it's like an artist loft kind of vibe with a, with a roommate. Yeah, I think um, Paul has... Uh probably jumps between three places in detroit um he definitely owns something back in new york uh but out here uh it's staying in the spare bedroom of the aunt and uncle that he is helping adjust to life in america here in detroit um and then he probably bounces around between uh flop houses and um like uh sort of mid-rate lower end hotels just for nights or two that he needs to spend some time away from the the family fair enough fair enough and then with that um you guys are we're going to start you at the local diner getting some breakfast um we'll say we want to do you two want to start knowing each other or are you kind of wayward souls that are running into each other i was going to say you know is one of the places that uh, paul bops between you know, his buddy Clarence's couch at the loft, but that's, uh, I'm open to either rock to rock. Where, where, how would you like to start this? Um, I could see a, a situation where we are, um, uh, acquainted with each other. Um, I think, uh, I think that, uh, the struggling artist and Paul, uh, would probably share some spaces, um, bumping around through a bunch of different, um, like flop houses and places just to take like quick beds. Um, maybe the, you know, the, a private room at a hostel or a flop house is still nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, a, it's enough privacy for uh, Paul to get out and, uh, you know, uh, take care of things while he's away from the family. Um, and so I think uh, some of those common rooms, you know, uh, that is those shared spaces. We might've run into each other at some point. I imagine either, but either directly encountered or like you might've been at one of these places looking for a friend, you know, a, a fellow struggling artist who's maybe doing a little bit worse than you. And, you know, they live at the flop house kind of thing. Sure. Um, so I, I think we're both no strangers to the diner um, and have probably seen each other in a couple of places. We probably know similar people. Sure. It's like one of those things where like, if you go to the same establishment long enough, you know the wait staff or you know the help or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you've probably been there enough to recognize and like that's like the mutual friend. You know, mm -hmm. we both show up at the diner and, and we're both like, Susie's not working the day. I wonder why. She's always here on Monday day or like Monday mornings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, that, kind of, that. that kind of that kind of a connection. I think that works. Yep, that sounds good to me. And your your artist buddy that you were looking for uh is named Tim Schaefer. Um, and you okay. haven't seen him for a while in all honesty. So just keep that in mind. Um, and haven't been able to locate him. Uh, but, uh, you, it's the morning of, uh, May 16th, 1920. Uh, the, the city is starting to wake up a little bit. Um, a lot of people are tending to go into the diner, you know, um, and get some, get some breakfast, some coffee. Um, it's, the morning is um, moderately chilly. Um, it's definitely, you know, kind of that morning where you'd want a jacket. Everybody's kind of hunched over, pulled their jacket close in, kind of holding holding the uh, the seam together at the front of their jacket to keep the warmth in. You know, they have their, their nice hats on as much as they can to keep warm. Um, and, you know, getting in the diner, you have the, the coat rack at the front. Everybody's kind of hanging them up. It's a nice kind of inviting place to be honest um and it's it's a nice deli um has all sorts of nice things good coffee in the morning um you can get kind of what type of food you would like typical breakfast type of food at the time um pancakes you know that type of stuff 
Um, and as you guys are sitting there, you know, kind of chit chatting, kind of after you haven't seen each other for a little while and, and just kind of catching up, um, the waitress is, you know, kind of stopping over to talk to you for a second. And the, the front door of the deli opens up and a wool scarf wrapped around her graying head. Um, the waitress looks up as, as this lady walks in and uh, says, Oh, Miss, Miss Carmine. Uh, hello. Um, and you two know, um, Mrs. Carmine. Um, and in fact, recently, um, you know that her husband just passed away, um, pretty recently. Um, and she definitely has a daughter that, that you guys both know as well. She comes into the diner regularly, um, before, um, getting on the trolley and going to, you know, a better part of the town from where you guys are. And she works at a flower shop and looking at Mrs. Carmine as she comes in, um, you can tell she's wringing her hands, um, you know, with a little bit of crumpled paper, uh, there as well. And she looks older. There's a lot, it seems like there's a lot more wrinkles on her face. Um, and her eyes are kind of darting around the diner, um, quite a bit. Um, kind of that nervous, like looking around, trying to figure out what, what she wants to do and is not quite finding it. Um, you know her to be around 50 years old, but she looks much older than that right now. Um, and as she kind of is scanning the room, you know, furtively, uh, she, she catches a glimpse of, of you two, um, and the waitress and she kind of comes over and, and like kind of stands in front of your, your booth that you've got, um, kind of blocking you in there a little bit. Uh, and she says, please, please, you ha you have to help me. But Poppy hasn't come home yet. And the waitress, as she's kind of got the coffee mug over uh, Paul's coffee mug, and she kind of looks over at um, this lady, and she's like, "Come home, come home from where?" Uh, and she, the lady's like, "I, I don't know. Uh, you people were her. You knew her. Uh, you, you got to help me find her. I, kn I knew these ideas of hers were going to get her in trouble." I called the police, of course, uh, uh, but because I thought she might have gotten arrested or something. Uh, but but they they weren't interested at all and said they they don't know they don't know where she is. I I don't know where she is either. I I, I um they they said she probably ran away. But but Poppy would never leave me. She she'd never leave. That she 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 works. She brings home money for me just just after my husband died too. She she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't do that. No. No, especially not after dear Alfred passed. Um, and so as she starts going on, or is, mm -hmm. it, is it the moment? Is it the scene? Are you good? <laughs> and uh, right about then, you know, she's doing that. The waitress, you know, brings over a chair uh, for for uh, Miss Carmine to um, collapse in. And she kind of collapses in there and she's still kind of wringing her, her hands um, and, and looking at you guys quizzitively. Oh, I think uh, uh, Paul's just been like eating through this whole thing, just sort of like not even looking <laughs> at her, just sort of eating down. There's probably a moment like when she first comes in, he's like, oh, Clarence, your girl's in trouble. Your sweethearts need some help. But um, as as she gets going more and more, like, you know, not an opportunity for, for him to respond. It's like, Jesus Christ, I didn't ask for your, your whole life story. Um. So, you know, well... While Paul is muttering away into his eggs and steak or whatever he's chowing oh, on there. Yeah. 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 He seems like a hearty boy. Uh, Clarence is going to, you know, soothe, work on soothing Mrs. Carmine, you know, fan her with the newspaper he he was reading. He folds it back up and starts fanning. Hey, hang on now, Mrs. Carmine. Hang on. So, so Poppy, um, did, did she go to work last night? Like, I mean, we might have an idea where she hangs out, but did she... Did she not come home after work or did she just go out for the day? How long have you not, how long have you noticed she was missing? Well, well, um, it, it would, if it wasn't yesterday, she, she, it, it's been two days. I, I haven't seen her in two days. Uh, she, she left on Wednesday morning to go to work. 
uh, promising to stop by the grocers on on the way home uh, to see about picking up some flour. We we were going to make some bread that night together, um, which I was really looking forward to. It and, and and I haven't I haven't seen her since then. She's gone. Okay. Well, she got like a boyfriend or something, you know, can she be out? Well, well, yeah, she, she's, she's been, she's been seeing the guy at the, at the, at the flower shop that she, she works with. Um, they, they've been doing some stuff. Um, I, oh, some I, stuff, huh? <laughs> well, Clarence is going to kick all into the table. Oh, uh, um, yeah, no, um, we're real concerned about it. Yeah. She's a good girl. <laughs> I swear it's those weird books she's been reading too. There's got to be something with that. What? So, all right, hang on. So she's been doing weird stuff with the boyfriend. Shoots Paul a look, oh, and he's she's looking been... at you with like just hiding a smile. Just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. see, Cedric. And she's, she, she's reading Cedric. weird books. Okay, well, Cedric. Well, this that's... boy just sounds better and better. Cedric, who works at the flower shop. Well, not. Hang on. Hang on. Not just. No, no judgments here. I've definitely bought some flowers from Cedric. He's a nice kid, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Carmine. He's a nice kid. He's a good kid. So, what have you got? Any of these books she was reading, or are those back at the house? Like, what are we? How weird? What What do you think they've been up to? Well, well, I, I, I'm not sure. She, she um, the, there's definitely some some books uh, uh, back in back in her room at the at the house. Um, you know. I've heard her talking about some Egyptian, you know, kind of religious rites, uh, and ghosts and, and that type of stuff. I, 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 I don't, I don't know what to make of it. You know, I, I just figured it was, you know, kind of stories and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and she, she got really interested in, in kind of life after death when, you know, dear Alfred, uh, was really sick. Um, and, and didn't like the, the versions our, our priest was telling, told, told her. And she kind of got, as she says that last part, she gets kind of quiet, and she's also furtively kind of looking around a little bit, too. Um, sure. I think uh, while she's talking again, uh, Paul's, like, he's taken a, a biscuit, uh, cut it in half, and has, like, applied jam to it, and just, like, <laughs> slides it over to her. And just, like, why don't you have a bite? Collect your thoughts, you know? And she Slow down, all right? Just take a minute. Take a breath. She, she like, while she's talking and you slide it over, she it doesn't even seem to register that you've passed it over, but she grabs the plate and she holds the toast and it's just shaking in her hand. Um, and she's like, you know, and I, I, you know, with her doing that, like I've always, I've always stayed away from that sort of reading. And I, you know, I prefer, you know, the lives of the saints instead of, of, of course. Oh, naturally. Cause we all love the saints. Of course we do. And I think he like flashes a little bit. Um, <laughs> he definitely wears a star of David <laughs> around his, uh, his neck. Um, it's probably a little ostentatious, it's probably like a, a gold chain with a, a star on it. It was like, Oh, the saints, tell me more. Oh, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm but... sorry. I didn't mean, mean to mean to offend you. I, 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 nah, 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 nah. It's all right. It's all right. But uh, yeah, no, your your girl's a good one. You know, it's uh, she probably they probably just ran off together for a weekend. She forgot to tell you, or you know, he tried to surprise us some shit. But we can take a look. Maybe we figure out where, uh, what kind of places they might go. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, other play her friends. I, I I went to talk to her friends too, and and they haven't they haven't seen her. Uh, Miss Fanny Boyle that she goes and sees all the time. Who's who's head of the local chapter on women for equal rights. Uh, uh, you, you know them. Uh, they, they, none of them have seen her either. Have you, have you been out to the flower shop yet over across, uh, across town? I, 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 I haven't gone all the way over there. Uh, but, but, um, uh, uh, I had some people, I, ha I had a friend of mine go down there and, and look and, 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 uh, she hasn't been there. I think, uh, Paul puts like another sausage link into his mouth and he's like, yeah, we'll talk to Fanny. I know Fanny. She's a good girl. Yeah. We'll talk to a couple others. Mrs. Carmine, I think you've given us some of the um some of the pieces to sort of start looking into this here puzzle. But why don't you go uh or hang out here? Susie or no, wait, Susie's the one who wasn't wearing. Waitress here will get you a cup of coffee and we'll we'll work through some of these ideas about where we should be going next. I feel like the flower shop's a good place to start. Uh, Paul here thinks we should start with Fanny Boyle. Let's let's get some wheels turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Closer. 
and 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 if you if you if you like to to see if there's anything in in Poppy's room, I could I could always let you let you in there too, and 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 you could look around and see if there's there's anything you can find. I I I I, I don't know what to look for in there, so so um uh you, uh, you know if that if that would help. I'm curious about these books. My, my I am boy Clyde's got a sharp eye. Mm. Yeah. Well, why, don't, uh, why don't you tell us like where we can find you, where you guys live, and then we'll do a couple rounds and we'll come back over and you know we'll come to call. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, and and you well you you guys know where I I live. It's just you know kind of down the street a little bit, and um you know the the flower shop is more 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 toward uh more toward downtown. Um um. Uh, if you're if you're headed that way, the the tram goes there, of course. Yeah, we yeah. can figure our way out. We'll, we'll, we got that, lady. We just you know where where we're coming back to is the question, really. Like we can we'll sort it. Oh, okay. Don't you worry, pretty little lad. We'll find Poppy. You know, we'll we'll talk to Fanny. It's easy peasy. You know, it's I'm, I'm telling you, probably just went away for a weekend with the boy. Didn't tell you nothing. But uh, you know, we'll we'll check. She's a good lady, you know, uh, a sweet kid. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I'm I'll, I'll head home here, and, and and if you guys stop by, just just knock on the door, of course, and and uh, I'll I'll help you out. Yeah, we'll maybe get her a couple of other books too. You know, uh, I think there's uh, some more literature out there than just uh, Lives of the Saints. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh okay, okay. And and also thank you, Albinosaurus Jones, for the follow. Appreciate it. All right, so she she gets up and uh, kind of like <laughs> rogue killer. Thank you. She gets up and uh, kind of start like absentmindedly, like going to go do something, and and um, she definitely you know is is not quite working through where she's at at the moment she she's bumping she bumps into someone on her way out she oh 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 sorry about that um and and kind of gets the door um and and starts walking outside and in fact the waitress looks up and and goes oh my goodness i'll, I'll be right back and runs and grabs her jacket from the uh, coat hanger and runs out into the the street and uh you know puts it on miss carmine um and and Mrs. Carmine barely notices and just like, oh, thank, thank you. And she's still, she's still kind of wringing her hands, and you can see the the little piece of paper that she had in her her hands. Yeah, I think uh, sort of like still like just sipping coffee and like shoving down like sausage links and like watching her out the door, going, <laughs> "Dang, she uh, thank God I don't gotta get hids." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's she definitely like bothered. Um. She's wringing a piece of paper in her hands. I missed that that beat uh, when she was coming in. So, uh, Paul, do you think we should go and take a look at these books and get maybe a better idea what uh, what little Poppy's been getting into, or do you want to kind of go into this blind here? Uh, you know, I, I'll follow you to lead. I'm not. I don't do with the books so much, but uh, you know, I'm this. Maybe that's the ticket. I don't know. I'm pretty convinced it's probably just her and the boy went out. But, uh, you know, sure. Let's uh, let's go wander into this lady's house and just look through her daughter's books. That seems real real nice. That seems, you know, private. <laughs> I mean, she's... Look, I hear you. Look, she's look where I'm from, today. everybody just keeps to their own. You understand? <laughs> I mean, but she brought her own to us, No. Yeah, whatever you say, boss. Let's just you know. You you pick one. Thank let's, you. Let's, follows. I'm, I'm gonna going on today. Clarence, Clarence is gonna you know you, you you he's gonna like motion at the plate like just wave his hand at it and he's gonna get up to go run after Mrs. Carmine and, and flag her down. Mrs. Carmine, Mrs. Carmine, and pull her you know pull her up short. We're gonna. Uh, I'll race after you after I shove like what you left on your plate in my mouth. <laughs> uh, just like grabbing like so using a biscuit to like sop up that gravy, whatever else is in there. You know, like mm -hmm. grab a piece of ham, just roll it all up together. Uh, <laughs> like create a breakfast sandwich on the fly and just like 
like shove it in the face and like walk out after him and like toss mm-hmm. um toss a couple of dollars or whatever I sort of know is gonna cover our our costs here on the table and and like with a mouthful of food like wave at the the waitress and like say something but totally unintelligible because what's in the mouth yep yep I'll, I'll follow behind him okay uh you go you go running out um after after mrs carmine and uh you can catch up to her and she's 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 it, she looks focused on what she's doing she's barely paying attention um and in fact you you kind of run out into the road after her because she was almost about to get hit by a car she was just absent-mindedly kind of um re- going out into the road are you, are you setting me up are you setting me up <laughs> you know what i gotta say oh I'm, I'm contractually obliged to say it as a new yorker as the stereotype of a new yorker go for it hey i'm fucking walking here <laughs> precisely precisely yeah. just just uh, shaking my fucking fist with the, this whatever car it was a fucking walk in here you goddamn newfangled fucking automobiles <laughs> the the person in there um <laughs> uh kind of puts his head out the side well i i, I and it's this it's a well-dressed gentleman kind of clean cut and he he pokes his head out the window he's like oh, sorry about that it, it, she just kind of walked out into the road yeah, I think uh, I'd like to I'd like to break uh, the the dice uh, in and uh, just for my own uh, desire, try to intimidate him. Just be like, fucking drive around. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, sorry, sorry. Jeez. And he'll he'll kind of get away from you as fast as possible. Clarence is uh, going to, you know, scoop Mrs. Carmine out of the road and, and, you know, take her under an arm under a wing there as Mm -hmm. Paul has words with the driver or words at the driver, I should say. Yep. Yep. Okay, And you can you can get her out of the get her out of the road Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. pretty easily. Um, She's, you know, she again recognizes you. She still has a a real odd look about her with her eyes kind of darting everywhere. She's she's pretty worried at the moment. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, Ooh. oh, oh, are, are you, are you coming back to, back to my place? Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and walk you, walk you home there, Miss Carmine. Just make sure you get across the street safely and get you back under your own roof. And what, what have you got there? What's it's, you seem pretty upset, but you're destroying that piece of paper. Is that just today's rag? Uh, um, uh, this, uh, uh, I, I, I found it in in the house, uh, and and it's it's kind of, um, kind of weird. I, I I can show it to you when we when we get back to the back to the house. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's let's do. Let's let's head on home. Let's get you sat down and maybe a nice cup of coffee, right? Okay. Okay. Um, we we can nice do that. Um. Uh, and uh like you guys get a, can get a Oop, go ahead go ahead sorry no you 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 run the show go ahead <laughs> oh is that how it is well if that's the case <laughs> oh wait um all right so you guys uh you guys can walk to her place she she and poppy and and her husband you know um weren't super rich but they also you know weren't weren't uh you know living in a cardboard box type of idea so they have a pretty decent house um you know a couple bedroom house uh with a you know a little bit of a hedge going around the front yard um and you guys she'll walk you right in and uh you know the first thing she does is she walks in takes off her jacket and immediately goes to the kitchen and starts prepping a tea kettle um and as you guys are are there you realize um that she's making some you know some tea um and you know about halfway through making you know two cups specifically she starts making two cups and she looks down it and she kind of puts her hand over her mouth and she's like oh my goodness and she pushes the one cup uh kind of up and she she turns around and looks at you guys uh, uh, can i can i get you a a a, a cup of tea um I think uh, 
Paul will probably just sort of like wave his hand noncommittally. Um, but can I get a beat on this reaction of hers? Um, do like a psychology check or something? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. What's 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 going on here? Hello there. Okay. Uh, that is a flat success. All right. Well, hello there. Um, okay. So with a flat success, uh, you're you're of the assumption that she was making tea for her and Poppy, um, and yeah, gotcha. and the cup that was there, that. they they look more, they don't look like the newest cups. They look like they're regularly used. So this looks like kind of a, you know, kind of one of those things that you know she'd always do when Automatic Poppy was response. home type of idea. Yeah, she got she went into autopilot and then got yep. got spooked by her own autopilot basically. Yep. Yep. At least that's Ooh, what I yeah. think. Okay. Yep, yep. Um okay. Um uh, I think like Paul feels a little bad now. I think he's going to try to lean into it and be like, "Uh tea sounds lovely. That would be delightful. Thank you." I think Clarence is going to Oh, great if you have it. <laughs> great. Uh Clarence is going to kind of shift over to like as soon as they get inside, um mm -hmm. He's going to let like that that first autopilot scene get her in the door. He's not going to like immediately start trying to get that paper out of her hands, but he's going to start taking in the apartment. Um, you know, are there dust rings on the wall? Is there stuff missing off the countertop? Just kind of that analytical step in the door. Are there things missing? Did she steal from the house and run away? Or, mm -hmm. you know, is everything look like look like how it's supposed to look in here? Yeah. What what do you what are you using for that? Like what skill do you want to use for it and how do you how do you want to play that out? Phrase, because I want to know what to take. No. Um <laughs> <laughs> Like are you doing like uh you know um Is there a I'm looking for like a notice or a you know what I'm trying to look. There's no search or would it be a spot hidden? There, no, but I don't can... really know what I'm looking for. It's more of a just does this look like a normal, happy, healthy home? You know, mm -hmm. you could probably uh, tie in like a psychology role if you wanted to. A spot hidden would work for it because you're kind of looking for what would look out of out of place. Um, you know, I, can... I might go for a spot hidden then. I'll, I'll okay. run a spot hidden. So for rolling in FGU for Cthulhu, do I just drop percentiles down or do I click and drag I'll the skill? Click in the number on the skill. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. The skill will work for me. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh -huh. And then in, in seventh ed, the, the way it works for skills is if you get below your your success based on a normal difficulty, you you succeed. So for example, your spot hidden is a sixty five, you get below that. If it's a difficult roll, you have that number and you have to get below that. And if it's kind of that ungodly hard, like, you know, olympic level type of um feats and things like that or you know you're trying to spot hidden of you know uh kind of like a hawk can see type of level of you know spotting hidden then you take one fifth and you need to roll below that so this would be you know kind of a normal roll so you definitely succeed excellent yeah we got a uh, 24 out of 65 for a hard success uh, so looking around the house, um, you can tell um, that this is definitely someone who has been recently widowed. Um, there's, you know, kind of like um, like in the movie um, Up, right? You have the two chairs sitting by the window, um, both mm -hmm. a little different from each other. And you can tell that, you know, one looks um, like it hasn't been sat in as as recently. And the other one is the one that she would typically be be sitting in. Um, and there's kind of a, a small couch um, sitting next to them that uh, you would guess that Poppy would use when they'd have their tea in a small table there um, that they could set their tea on and, and drink there. Um, the pictures on the wall um, don't speak of anything terrible or anything like that. Um, you know, some some normal family pictures, um, not a ton of them. Um and uh, you can see, you can definitely see a little bit of that um, wear and tear on someone's psyche after something like that. So you like looking in the, into the kitchen, you can tell that um, there's some, some dishes in the, in the sink um, and stuff like that. And there's, 
um, some bread that you can kind of tell has been out there for longer. Like she hasn't been been doing well necessarily the, at least the last two days and also losing her husband recently. Um, it doesn't look like she's doing the best over the last couple of days, but there's nothing in here that's jumping out at you that like there's been some some trauma or a fight or anything like that that's happened uh, that you can okay. tell. All right. All right. So Clarence, you know, after taking a look around, sort of taking the all in and, and setting this place in his mind, he said, uh, Mrs. Carmine, which which room is Poppy's? Um, I'm going to let you make the tea with Paul here and I'm going to go take a look. Uh, OK, I, I, I can bring it up to both of you if you if you both want to go, go up there. Um, I'll, I can show you really quick while the, while the water is heating up. I don't know if books are really his thing. He's going to lean in and say it loud enough for Paul to hear. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, there's a lady present. I'm a boxer. I'm not uneducated. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not well educated, but that doesn't mean I'm an idiot. They're not mutually <laughs> exclusive. I know. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Carmine Clarence is looking is at be... the two of you going back and forth and she's she's still kind of bringing her hands like she doesn't know what to do at this point she's she's got yeah. that quizzical look like I, 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 I uh, he's gonna roll his eyes and and take her by the hand all right mrs carmy let's go upstairs show us which room is poppy's and then you can make that tea and what's okay. uh what's on that paper you were gonna show us uh uh yeah um uh and she'll she'll uh, come on up I'll, I'll i'll show you where i got it uh um is there any? Is there going to be enough time? I think, based on the layout of this house, to like slip into the kitchen for a minute. Uh, she starts going upstairs. Um, there is a second floor to the house, um, and it's not a huge house, uh, but it's also she's she's not going up the stairs the fastest. So you think you've, you'd have a you know a few seconds certainly to uh, pop in the kitchen. It's like think of like a four corner house type of idea. So the kitchen's just kind of off right of the entryway mm -hmm. um, and the kind of living room I was talking about is on the, the left side. So as she's going up the stairs, you can literally just walk three steps into the kitchen. Yeah. I basically like, I, she's going to lead Clarence up the stairs. I'm going to follow behind them in a minute, but if the, you know, uh, probably she's not making haste. So I just kind of want to dip into the kitchen and like actually like look through their cupboards and stuff for like a quick second. Okay. Right. Uh, right. I, I, Paul Paul has an idea of like things um like that could happen in a uh, a family with uh, recent tragedy so he's kind of looking to see like have they resorted to like this is prohibition era still so I was like are we are we drinking on the side are we like trying to uh, you know get away with anything here of like uh, are we self medicating and in some sort of way is is what he thinks is probably happening and like between between either her or the daughter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you can certainly do that it's not going to take long there isn't a ton of stuff here but why don't you give me a roll what are you going to use for it how are you going to go um, through and one. look through the room uh if i needed to i was going to you know try to sneak away into the room and so be stealthy but i don't think he's going to bother if she's already heading up the stairs with uh clarence and if he can like if they're talking to each other um then he's basically just going to use that as his cover and i would probably just go for for spot hidden but i'd probably like opening like drawers and cupboards and like really digging in a little bit deeper okay yep go ahead that certainly works and yeah they're they're talking so you're pretty sure that you know lightly opening stuff isn't gonna necessarily alert her okay uh and you succeed at that role certainly um it's really easy to go through the cupboards and like um the ice box and that type of stuff um and and kind of running through there you you don't see anything like you're talking about the self medication part um okay. you know you you see you find like that there's a fair amount of tea in here um that you find you know normal stuff it looks like uh certainly you go you know into the ice box the the food looks like it's it's not been taken well care of um you know, it looks like the milk might have spoiled in there. Um, oh, he definitely like a smell in it too. Then, like, yep, just like, yep, Ugh. yep. Um, it looks like okay. she. It looks like it might have been that the the fridge door was, you know, the the ice box door was left open for a while, type of idea. Um, that type of stuff. Um, 
but other than that, normal normal type of stuff in the in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's gonna make a note of that and probably probably gonna try and do the same kind of thing upstairs wherever their like uh, bathroom is, but in this time look for like medications and stuff. But uh, for the moment, I'm just gonna gonna sort of hustle back up the stairs behind uh, Clarence. Yep. Yep. By the way, just as an aside, uh, uh, with uh, with you fives, what do you do? You think do you think that we're close enough that there's any nickname potential between us? <laughs> um. Yeah, if it's uh, asshole and fucking retard, but <laughs> you know, I think that it's it's, I think it's definitely like just sort of a grudging, like you know, I know you well, but not well enough. But it's mm. like I think Clarence is of a temperament, and you probably would have sussed this out. It looks like you rolled psychology, so you have some psychology. Like he's easygoing enough that it's you. You have nicknames for Clarence, while he may not have nicknames for you. Well, also, like, Paul's the kind of, yeah, Paul's the kind of guy that would have nicknames for people even if they didn't like it. Exactly. Uh, because what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, no, I was just sort of, like, wondering, like, if, like, what he probably calls you. He probably just does call you Clarence. Uh, yeah. Unless he knows that there's some name you don't like. Like, if he didn't like your middle name, but he knew it, <laughs> he would definitely <laughs> call you that. <laughs> I think, um, I don't know that he would know the middle name just, just yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Maybe too pedestrian for that, but Clarence and I'm sure you'll come up with something. Maybe calls him clarinet when he feels like Clarence is being whiny or some shit. Yeah, no, I think he's already he's already zeroed in. I think on CW. Oh Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of which, I think it's likely that you would know uh, after hanging out, and if we do have like a common friend that um, that his real name is Pavel, right, and that he's uh, okay. a you know a Polish descent. Mm hmm. But uh, okay, I can work with that. Anyway, but yeah, just wanted to. I was well, as soon as I said like follow Clarence up the stairs, I was like, dude, do, do, does he call him Clarence? I wonder. Uh, we'll we'll see going <laughs> forward now. He is. All right. All right. All so, so after you've kind of searched through the the kitchen a little bit, are you heading right upstairs, um, or what you doing? Yeah, just down there, just flipping those things open. Um, uh like i said he's got a he's got a plan in mind you know whether or not it makes sense or you know is accurate that's the way paul thinks it's like there might be something else in this equation to like this stress or like the daughter so he's gonna try and get it basically gonna get a tour of the home and find out where the bathrooms are and like sneak that in later but he's not gonna start right now by just wandering around the bottom of the house if they're going upstairs he's gonna fall upstairs okay certainly certainly um so uh, you can follow him upstairs, and um, the two of them are kind of up there talking um, a little bit. Um, she's she's not doing the best at uh, conversing. Um, so you kind of get up there, and um, you know she's she's like, oh oh, th there you are. I, I I was wondering if you got you got lost. Uh, um, no, I just tied uh, my shoe, put my uh, coat on the rack over there. Oh oh okay. Um, uh, so she, she opened, she's like, this is, this is Poppy's room here. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you guys to it, uh, and, and, uh, go finish the tea. Uh, uh, so, uh, I'll, br I'll bring it up, uh, once, once it's done. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Yes. Too kind, Mrs. Carmine. Too kind. Awesome. So, uh, door to her room, uh, is nothing, um, too fancy. It's, you know, pretty normal door for the time. Uh, opening the room, um, her room is also a pretty simple affair. Um, she's got, you know, whitewashed wood walls, uh, simple dormer and the windows that look down onto the front walk. Um, there is a book that's open on the desk, um, as well. Um, and the room is, you know, orderly. Um, also has a, you know, a wardrobe in it. Um, you can kind of see some clothing in there. It's not fully closed. Um, and you also see like, um, a decoration that she has, which is a kind of black geometrical, uh, crystal on the windowsill. Okay. Oh man. Part of me wants to say, and Clarence backs out of the room and goes back to the diner. 
Oh, I think um, Paul just like starts moving into like almost everything you mentioned. Like he opens the wardrobe fully and just starts like, you know, looking through the clothes. And, you know, there could be a moment where it's like this probably has nothing to do with the investigation. There's probably nothing that we can learn here. But he's just just immediately just like, what is this? What is everything? Um, and unless like Clarence has like some thing to go back and forth with, he'd probably just go around until he reached that that uh, sort of strange geometric um, decoration and just like immediately pick it up and like give it a once over. Uh, No, Clarence doesn't have anything specific. He's probably going to uh, either roll a psychology or a spot in because Mrs. Carmen specifically mentioned the book. So he kind of wants to go around the room and start, you know, what book is open on the desk? What was she reading last? And what's next to it? What was her reading list looking like? You know, are there things that leap out at him, et cetera. Uh, so what do you what do you two want to do first? What do you uh, like? We've talked about the black crystal. One of you want to look at that. One of you wants to kind of look around the room and see what you can find. Uh, what do you want to yeah, do look at the black first? crystal and sort of try to gauge whether it has any significance to uh, anything I know. Um, they have a little bit of occult, which I would probably maybe try to apply if it looks like it belongs to any. The symbology belongs to anything that I know. Um, uh, I think that's probably the first thing because he's like Paul's gonna let Clarence have first crack at like books if they're in there. <clears throat> okay. Um. So you pick up the crystal and start looking at it. It it kind of resembles uh, smoky quartz. Um. But the but you know kind of um, if you have any geology, um, it, it's it seems a little too clear. Um. And you kind of mentioned you know occult and looking at that. So why don't you? As you're looking at this, give me an occult roll um, and see if you right. can glean anything off of it. Nah, it's too much for me. Too much for you? Yep. And then Clarence, if you also want to roll as he's kind of looking at it, you can you can do the same thing if you would like okay. to. I can flip an, flip an occult over the shoulder. I was just thinking in the 20s, you know, there wasn't Google, Wikipedia, or emo teenagers. Like, was Wiccan, yep. you know, would the common man have known that a religion like that still existed? Um, well, like that, there's there's definitely stories out there, just, just like nowadays. There's, you know, kind of fantastical stories of, of various things. Like, you know, she started talking to you about, you know, Egyptian type of um, lore and mythology that she was mentioning in the diner. And you guys didn't, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, it makes sense. So you do know of, you know, that occult type of stuff is out there. It's not necessarily too surprising to you. Um, but like that, as you, with your roles, you're not the most versed in like all of the occult type of stuff. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That role was uh, another incredible fail. So push the roll, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. push the <laughs> roll, push the roll. <laughs> push the roll i don't you can... i don't uh, yeah yeah all right you got push one in four chance what's the worst that could happen i have to like be upset with the lady i guess all right mrs carmine my I... daughter's strange uh idol can i push this role lord keeper you may you absolutely may oh don't don't fail again what fail. happens do it Ugh. Ah, yeah. I can spend. I can spend some luck, though. I'm within you within spend shouting this. All your luck. <laughs> <laughs> it tells you on the fucking program. You'd have to I spend know. 33 of 40. I don't think that's the ticket, buddy. I'm looking at it. It it could be a thing. <laughs> Good. It could. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll hang out with seven luck, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I'm not going to spend the luck. I push the roll. I'm not going to spend the luck. I looked over. I failed. What what happens here? So so we've got we've got two options here. I can certainly come up with something as we as we start pushing rolls. Um, this is one where you know if you want to tell me kind of what what you think happens here. Um, you know, right, kind of uh, my idle. idea if I were to right, the idle. What yeah? Exactly. What I was going to say is you'd you'd break it. You'd break off some piece of it. Uh, would be what I would say would happen, but. If you have a better idea of what what that looks like to push and fail, I'm yeah, open to the I opinion. I think that I, you know, I look over to see what what Polly's picked up here, and 
I think that as I look over, because I was just picking up the books, or maybe I just started fanning the pages. I have an idea for you. Uh, Okay. I was going to say, I sneeze and you jump and like snap off a piece in your fingers there. (laughs) No, I'm thinking it's stupider than that. I think, I think, I think Paul is like looking at it and you're like, oh, let me have a look and you go to grab it. But I am possessive and just like, don't give it up right away. And you just like (laughs) yank it. And we like, it's both our faults, basically. Okay, uh, so so you guys, you're holding uh, on to it, and it's kind of like that that you know wishbone type of moment where you're like, here, let me yeah. see that yoink, and you're you're. I'm both... not done with it. Stop it. No. <laughs> you're like, I know more than you about this. It's like the hell you do. Fuck. Let me. Yeah, I think it's an embarrassing scene. I think for two adult men. Yep. They... And so so with that too, as you pull it apart, um, what you get though is the as as the crystal pulls apart um it it feels like the light in the room darkens just just a little bit um and kind of goes quieter like you kind of have the street noise coming from outside um and you can hear some people talking you can kind of hear the tea starting to boil you know, the water starting to boil downstairs and the room just gets a little bit darker not a lot like you know 10 percent darker type of idea and it just gets a little quiet and then it comes back up and if you two would like to give me a sanity roll for that please uh sure (laughs) what if what if i don't give you a sanity roll what if i want to keep it (laughs) well you're playing cthulhu I'm I'm here to tell you your sanity is is pretty flighty. All right, uh, so zero. okay, there we go. Double click on it. All right. Ooh. Thank you, John. Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, so we have a. Paul failed and and mm-hmm. Clarence succeeded. So, uh, Paul, do, you're gonna roll one d two of uh, sanity drain uh, for me, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, describe what Paul's thinking and why that that kind of emotionally and and sanitarily drained him. <laughs> sanitarily. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Um, we don't have a D two, so let's assume we'll just do a, a D four and have whatever we got. Yep. Give it that go. What it what it generate? Or no, I got to roll it in the box for it to tell me, right? Yep. Yep. There we go. Uh, okay, so we'll do two. Um, I think. Uh, let me mark that in my sheet as well. Don't want to get ahead of myself. And then, and then, while you're you're describing that, Clarence, why don't you just think about how you would describe why that didn't bother you? Um, as well, so I'll get mm. to you after after Paul goes over it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think so. Paul or Pavel was raised by immigrants who had very strong um, religious background, very very deep into their faith, um, and it didn't quite translate to to Pavel. You know, he's he's first generation, so he's all about like adapting into his environment and like picking up the norms from uh, his new country. And so mm-hmm. he, that's why he's only got a little snapshot of a cult because, you know, um, it does cover, you know, world religions and things like that. And he has like a baseline education specifically relating to his heritage. And that's about it. And there's just something about what he's already been told um, that they're into like some Egyptian stuff that he's like, he's, it just tickles the back of the mind of like, oh, I'm Jewish and Egyptians. Oh, fun. Yeah, that's a good time. Um, there's never been any problems between those two culture groups. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, he can't, he doesn't figure out what this thing is. I think it's just like a little nagging in the back of the brain. It's just like, oh, we broke it. Oh, Egyptian curses. Oh, no. Uh oh, no. Mm-mm. I've seen how this played out once before. Um, it's just like, it's a, it's a sign. You know, mom always said that the signs that happen and they come in threes and this is the second one. It's, this is, you know, it's just like, just pushing these instincts that's like, you know, he doesn't really fully believe in. Um, 
but on like a, a beefed role like that it's just like that's instinct like that's how he was raised to think even if he doesn't choose to think like that yep yep that's perfect i like that i like that and then uh clarence why like what's your character thinking that is just like nah this doesn't bother me at all um i think that it's because it's more of an object like he didn't you know he's it was maybe a peripheral item when they first entered the room and then he saw that Polly had picked something up. And so he glanced over and was like, Oh, you know, what's that? And just really, really casually had reached out to grab it and grabbed it. And Paul didn't let go. And so I think that it was more of an object to him. There was no significance to it. And as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, Clarence is a stone Mason, a stone cutter. So he works in inanimate, fragile, static objects, a static material. And so chips, you know, things happen, chips break, tips break off, and you just kind of start over and you've got to take that in stride. You know, he's, he's 50 years old. This isn't, so it's not the first time he's broken eggs in making an omelet. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, So you guys do that. um, And kind of, what do you guys do with this broken uh, crystal now that was sitting on the, the kind of mantle? What could you do, you fucking Jamook? I think, I think, Polly, this is the moment where we both, we both acknowledge that, um, that didn't go as planned. Uh, and maybe we both ag- don't acknowledge that something weird happened when hey, no, it no, broke. No, no. Hey, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. You give me the other piece of the thing. I'm just going to shove it in the drawer. No one will have to know. Yeah, exactly. It was, it, I, yep. <clears throat> He yeah. hands it back. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> just like already, even as you're like going through this mature response of like, we'll talk about, you know, this isn't uh, an issue. Like just already reaching into your hand to grab the other piece and like grabs it back out and like the closest drawer or cupboard or anything to like slip it into or like jewelry box, anything just out of sight, just yep. shove it back in. <clears throat> yep. Well, like that. There's well, the, you know, there's, there's uh, various things in here that you could shove it into. Um, and so you'll you'll easily find one like maybe the wardrobe you kind of pull some of the shirts I, beside I, you kind of put it yeah i put it inside of a like a coat uh jacket in the inside the wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> perfect i like it yeah like no, it. There, there could be no better cover you know okay um but uh, yeah just put it back in there and go like so what about these books you know what, what about the books instead huh <laughs> yeah so the books um books don't break as easy and he's gonna turn back around and start flipping through titles you know what was the one that was open on the desk that's the that's the first one he wants to check yep so the the one on the desk um you can um it's it's got a title to it and it's the rosicrucian cosmo conception uh is the name of the book um wow. which which, funnily enough, is an actual book that you can go go read if you want to. It was published in I 1909. I'm familiar with this. I was literally going to do a, a quick aside of like, goddamn Rosicrucian coming back again. <laughs> you don't know how many times in my Call of Cthulhu career I have come up against this fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like, no yep. joke, Rosicrucian. So I'm going to have to do a lot to make sure that I remember that Paul doesn't know shit about the Rosicrucian order, <laughs> order or the, the order of Rosicrucius or whatever it is again. Yep. Yep. Um, so if you, yeah. as you're, as you're looking through this, you can kind of look at it a little bit. Um, and uh, if you want to kind of get a little more information, what I'd suggest is like a library or a history or a mythos role. If you would like to kind of know some, more uh, I would definitely like to, let me see history versus uh, library use versus mythos i do not have a mythos so i'm gonna go for library use if that's all right uh yep well that looking good we got a 47 out of 80 a regular success awesome 80 percent in library use (laughs) he's he's an artist he's a there's there's (laughs) backstory there but yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> I don't, you know, it's obviously Paul would have no idea of like that, but like if Paul could see your character sheet, oh man, he'd just be yeah, just poking at you all day. Yeah, yeah, we all yep. know you're a bully. Yep. Oh so yeah, kinda, very much so. <laughs> so kind of that role you you remember as you've been looking through stuff that you know this book is considered um, some introduction to esoteric Christianity, 
Um, the Rosicrucians uh, have a headquarter in California somewhere, um, and you've heard they have some initiation practices um, and identify themselves by a white bone-like cross, um, uh, usually backed by five-pointed striped gold star. Um, and, uh, you know, as you picked it up too, um, Mrs. Carmine had put that piece of paper um, on the uh on the book so that that was there too and i actually can show you that if you give me just a second here Absolutely. Um, get this there we go and let me share it out well hey and so that's that's the paper that she was kind of bringing in her hands that um, she had set in the room, and it looks like it's uh, so a, she, a. She put down the paper in yep. the in the room and then went back downstairs. Okay. Yep. 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 <clears throat> um, and that's that's what was kind of on that book as well. So uh, Clarence is going to look up at Paul, say, "Hey, Paul, do you do you know what this is?" And he closes the book and holds it up kind of open-ended teacher you know teacher question uh what are you holding up the the book so the the rosicrucian manual um i don't think he would he definitely wouldn't know rosicrucian um but he might know some of the things that they know about um sure, sure, sure. because they you know in, in actual reality they do borrow some stuff from some uh from Judaism and from Jewish sure. mysticism. So he might, but I don't know that any of that kind of symbology is going to be on the cover. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think so, he just like looks at you and just shrugs. I don't know. Looks like some, uh, some of that, uh, I don't know, new wave Protestant Christian stuff. I don't know. Uh, not, not new wave. It's, it's old wave. Maybe not as old as Judaism, maybe older. I'm no expert. I'm not trying to make anybody angry. And he glances around. Um, no, you know, walls of ears. And uh, he says, I think that this book and this drawing, do you see what I'm seeing here on this uh, what is journal page? Yeah, directory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking maybe little Poppy is a good girl or isn't as good of a girl as we thought. I'm thinking maybe she is a member of or is inducting someone into this old religion. I don't kind of super Christian. Uh, maybe, maybe pure purist Christian, pure, pure pure strain might be a good way to think about it. Oh. I think this is one of the hey, 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 but I think this is one of the older versions of what Christianity became. You know, maybe a bridge uh, from from Judaism, if you will, if you would allow me to be so crass, Your Highness. Hey, <laughs> ain't nobody wear a crown here. I'm from New York, no kings, no masters. Oh god. But yeah, that might be that tea. might be an out of date reference for <laughs> that might be too early. That's definitely too early. <laughs> Whatever. When it eventually happens, Paul will be like, No, fuck you, I said that. Uh, um, um but uh um, Yeah, that's that's yeah, kind yeah. of the bent, I think. Yeah, I think um the I mean Paul will look it over, like if you're sort of like holding it out, he'll definitely yeah. like reach to take it. Yeah, and while you do that, he's gonna flip through the other titles on her desk there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, could I maybe apply either like education or intelligence uh, raw as like a, a knowledge role? Like, does any of this ring any bells to to Paul? Sure. Sure. Yep. Uh, what would you prefer then? Uh, I I'm not of a preference of which one. Like, kind of tell me why you're rolling the one that you want to roll and what you're what you're doing with it. Um, I think I'll you know it's 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 not uh the optimal one but i think i'll go for for education just because like i think you know, there's a possibility that somewhere in his background in his his grow, uh growing up and in his uh, uh development that maybe something tangential to this might have come up at some point um even just you know recognizing some of the symbology mhm mm mhm mm we'll do we'll do that hard success yeah, and that gets us a hard success yeah Okay, and you were just kind like of any any part of this book sort of like ring a bell, like you know, because he's not 
Christian. He's not a uh, Catholic. He doesn't have those backgrounds. But sometimes the symbology, you know, crosses over or draws on similar inspiration. You know, I I'm just wondering if there's anything that like sticks out to to Paul and his from his background. Uh, from your background, I would say you know probably not a ton is really jumping out at you. You know, there's there's a bunch of different uh, spin off. Uh, you know, smaller religions of, of various places. And um, it's not, it's not specifically right. jumping out at you as something that you really need to pay attention to. Yeah. So I think I just probably like maybe, um, it depends on what, what Clarence is doing, but if, uh, if Clarence is like picking up some other books or looking further then Paul will probably flip through the pages, but otherwise he'd hand it back. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Um, and then are there any other sort of occult or pointed titles that stand out on the desk or is that like the is that the one nope there's there's definitely some more there's some some uh like she was mentioning there's some on ancient egypt um kind of some history books along those lines um and that type of stuff but none of them are really jumping out at you as much as as something that um you know, is like, oh, this is gonna give us a clue type of idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then, you know, if that's the case, uh, we'll we'll take it. We'll take the Rosicrucian book back, as there's nothing else that Clarence really picks up. You know, he just kind of flips, like, oh, pretty, you know, pretty pedestrian high school reading, history class, whatever. This is all good, or college reading, whatever. And uh, he's gonna take the Rosicrucian book back and. I think maybe I feel like this is probably a good lead here, Polly. And then do you, do you do these numbers mean anything to you? He's going to spin the journal page around and point at this four slash seven, four slash 18. Um, yeah, just that, that part specifically. Yeah. It's, I mean, is that not the date? What's the day? Oh. I forget. Today's uh, the 16th and it's five sixteen. Uh, four mm -hmm. would be April, which we may have missed. Mm, I mean, yeah, it sounds like she's been doing things pretty right. What's the, uh, how often does that thing happen? I, I, I personally lost the picture. Where is that again? Let me see. It should, uh, I can be... share it out again. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it should be. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's a Seven, 17. 18, 19. Oh, yeah. 18, 19? Is that what it yeah. says? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Let's just, Take it with us, too. Yeah. All right. So he'll Clarence will throw the journal page into the cover of the book and then tuck it all into into a coat pocket inside a breast pocket. OK, okay. And and you guys, why don't we also, go see what that tea's going? Well, you guys also mentioned that you wanted to do a more serious search of the room as well. You still want to do that? Um, I think um... I think Paul's going to step out of the room for a minute and like wander that floor if nobody's there still um, and poke his head into like whatever other rooms are, are on this floor. Yep. I think uh, so you go out there. Uh, what are you doing, Clarence? I think Clarence is might take a second and look around the room. You know, it seems so simple. Uh, the room of a young lady and in, in our day our modern day and age of may 16th 1920 <laughs> yep. um he might maybe he you know just like drop down and peek under the bed like just some cursory stuff that paulie didn't didn't do when he was you know he opened up the wardrobe he rifled through clothes he might take a second and just look in some of the more obvious places that we pass by so maybe okay. a i guess it could be a spot hidden but he'll take a yep. second and go like mm, what are some of the other spots we could check here Go ahead and give me a roll. Regular success. All right. Uh, so as you're searching around, um, you don't find like anything under the bed. Nothing's really, you know, sticking out to you there. Um, you do get the idea um, that it's a pretty orderly room, though, um, is one thing that as you're looking under things and you're, you're kind of, you know, searching through things, you're kind of noticing that this isn't, like a haphazard room. It's not someone that, you know, is not thinking about things. There's an order to it that, that looks like Poppy has. 
Um, but as you're as you're kind of looking around, um, you notice uh, a board below where the black crystal was, um, and it looks like it's loose. Oh, okay. Well, that that like a moth to the flame. We'll uh, you know try and get our our fingernails under that, or um, you know see if we can just knock on a corner and pop up the other edge. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so you you go ahead and do that. Um, and let me make sure I've got the right. I think I might have done. Nope. I think I had the right one. Yes. Uh, so you open that up, and inside is, you know, pulling it out. It's it's a piece of cloth around uh, what looks to be like an art book. Um, and uh you know, kind of starting to, to look through it. Um, it's got some drawings and things like that. It, the drawing style also looks like the same one from the piece of paper that, um, uh, Mrs. Carmine handed to you. Um, and there are, there are a total of four pages in here that kind of stick out to you. Um, and I'll go ahead and share those out here. I actually shared the wrong image on the first one. There, we, as I said, this is the first time we're running this adventure, so obviously I've got some things. But let me share out all of the images here. So there is that one, um, and then I shared that one out already. Let me share this one out to you guys, and then this one. And then finally, this one. All right, so so which one was the one we actually saw first? So technically, the journal page uh, one is the uh, first one that she would have handed you that, that would have been on the book, technically. Oh, so, okay. man. Because that, that changes a lot. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, that uh I feel like that's definitely a date and that's definitely a a place and a, you know, a what, a who, a what and a when. Yeah, I mean if you've got all of those pieces for for sure, but I think um in the in hindsight, if uh, if we'd seen that one first, I think at the very least, um, uh, Polly also would have connected it to her her readings because of the the hieroglyphs. I think he just would have recognized those for sure. Oh, sure, sure. We can we can roll with this. Um, he's gonna recognizing that they're still upstairs. Like he starts making noise, like hey! <clears throat> clears his throat, um, and walks over to the door, sets everything down on the bed, walks over the door. Polly, hey, Polly. And then he's going to uh, go back to the bed and kind of lay this all out here. Well, okay. Polly comes back in so yep. that we so can while... look at all these pictures together. Yep. So while you were you were doing the searching before you you kind of call in Paul over. Uh Paul, there's there is um just another room in the upstairs. So it looks like there's a, a second bedroom. Um the door's open, so you, there's no really anything you need to do to get in there. And it looks like it's Mrs. Carmine's room and uh, what would have been her former husband's room as well. Um, it's, yeah. I think, not um, he just does a cursory look then because he's yep. not he's not really interested. Like he wanted to see if there was like any pieces to put together, but he doesn't think that there's going to be anything in in the mom and dad's room. So if yep. that's all it is, he'll just be like a quick look, look around. Like not even yep. I wouldn't even do a spot hidden on it. Yep, it and it looks like a normal room. There's a you know, same type of thing as in Poppy's room. You've got a wardrobe, you've got a bed, you know, there's a I guess a the one thing here. you would look to see is how many like religious symbols are in this room. Like do does she does she keep like a bunch of uh rosaries or prayer beads or like what's her, her jam? Uh you can definitely see um a cross over the bed and on the desk you do spot like a, a little jewelry type of dish that does have a rosary in it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just sort of like makes a mental note of like, yeah, yeah, it checks out. Um, so I think he's already like back in the hallway uh, that connects them when uh, 
when Clarence pokes his head out, so he'll just shuffle back over. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so you come back in the room, and Clarence is there uh, with some some paper and stuff spread across the bed. Holy shit, we got a fucking artist here. Yeah, looks like, but um, the the subject matter is concerning. So I'm going to assume that the rectory, and he taps on the book in his breast pocket, is uh, where some of these, or maybe all of these things are? I don't know. We got some scribbles at the bottom here. Well, what do you make of this? And he's going to flip around Missing Journal page one and point at that one first, but, you know, they're all laid out on the bed. Yep, and yeah. I'll... Let me give you some more information too about about this journal now that you guys are really looking at it. Um, so the the kind of art book here and kind of used as a little bit of a diary too. You see that there there are entries dating back for like four years. Um, there are long gaps uh, as you're kind of shuffling through it as well um, in the writing, and there's a longer one up until Christmas of last year. And, and Poppy records her father's slow health decline, um, the financial strain of his illness, you know, the medications aren't helping that type of type of stuff. And also the effects of his morphine use, um, including strange dreams where he would wake screaming about things. Um, she writes that it's through his, her father's acquaintance, uh, George Midweather, who owns the flower shop that she found employment. Um, you learn her employment is temporary until the Midweather's oldest son returns from his trip to England. Uh, once her father dies, she recorded that uh, Cedric uh, introduced her to a new library and bookshop near the flower shop. Uh, she calls it Our Little Research Laboratory, um, is what she has mm. it lovingly written in the book, um, but does not name it uh, specifically. Um, except to state that the dark shutters seem foreboding and sad on her first visit there. Um, it's from here she keeps get she's been getting um, her litany of occult books. She's she mentions that in there, and finally the last the last four pages contain cryptic references to the place beyond the wall, uh, which the um, you can kind of infer uh, the basement of a building or something like that that she might be in. Um, and the last page is the most crucial, and it's dated uh, specifically. So it's got multiple different dated entries. So and on May 1st, 1920, I've drawn a diagram of the ingenious device by which the builder concealed the chamber. Cedric seems frustrated with my desire to journal the room, uh, but my friend Fanny says that the best, most logical approach is always better than rushing in haphazardly. I understand Sed is upset over his brother's impending return, but as the elder, Mr. Med uh, Midweather pointed out, Harold's illness hasn't quite passed yet, so we'll have plenty of opportunities before my labor is no longer needed at the flower shop. Every time his brother comes up, his whole demeanor changes. Uh, and the next entry is May 3rd, 1920. Flower shop was unusually busy. Said is always fast and sharp at the bouquets, but he left quickly when someone came in with a cute little Yorkie ter terrier. Uh, found him in our secret room crying after I took care of the people in the shop. I'm glad I grew up without siblings after listening to what his older brother did to him as a kid. Even if the broken leg was an accident, the mutilation and killing of his dear little puppy was awful. Uh, the next entry is on May 6th, 1920. Cedric insisted I take the Black Crystal home. He says it has some sort of positive power, but I really don't appreciate its feeling. Uh, he's still so fragile, though, and the looming return of his brother isn't helping. Even on the window still, it seems to make the room darker. He's taken one for himself as well. I'm most fascinated by the bricked-up door. Mr. Matthews at the bookshop suggested an entry to an old supply storage, but the language on the lintel isn't one I'm familiar with. Uh, and then May 10th, I've drawn, I've tried to draw the door three times now, and none of the sketches seem to do it justice. The latest one is now doing service as a bookmark, simply because I think the characters on the lintel are clearest. Um, and that's the one that uh, you would have seen first. Um, Cedric seems sullen and troubled by the return of uh, his brother. Mr. Mrs. Midweather came in yesterday and was bragging to me about how her son is a real chic. Uh, I wish she would not pretend said doesn't exist in front of him. 
uh, once she left, said told me she's convinced I'll make Harold the perfect bride. I wonder if she's she'd feel the same way knowing that we ha- what we have in store for the monster. Uh, May 13th. The Women's League meeting went well. Fanny agreed to lend some assistance to our plan. And then the last entry is May 14th. Tomorrow's the day. It's been less than a week since the monster returned, and said is already bruised and terrified. Is that where that entry ends? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming, like, uh, I'm assuming that Paul was probably, like, looking over uh, Clarence's shoulder uh, as he goes through this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah. Holy fuck. It's a whole goddamn thing. This is why it's... Oh, I told you, boys are trouble. Boys are trouble, but um, she, she seems to have gone willingly into what could be her good night. That's a little bit morbid. I mean, you read it. <laughs> eh. Eh. I sound like messed up kids is all. I don't know, man. The the broken legs, the mutilated puppy, that sounds a little, like a pretty messed up kid. Eh. You never had brothers before, huh? <laughs> no, he, he is an only child, actually. Uh, oh, no, man. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Eh, I'm telling you, it happens sometimes. But uh, the dog thing, that's weird. That's that's real weird. I'll give you that. Yeah, that one doesn't sit right. Um, I, You know, Clarence is going to glance around the room kind of just to take a breath and, and uh, center himself after reading through some of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, um, the fucking thing. We broke the goddamn thing. Oh, I was right. It's a bad juju. Oh, my goodness. We said oh. we weren't going to talk about that. We, oh, it's too late oh, now. I thought we, about no. it again. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, CW, got to get it out of the thing. We got to take it. Well, I mean, only if it actually has positive power, or are these kids just spinning things? I don't know, but it's... I, I, oh, you bring it. Yeah. You, uh, you take it. You get in there. <laughs> yeah, how come you don't want to carry it, Polly? You a little uh, scared? Clarence is gonna go open the drawer. I I think that since you broke it, it's your fault. You're gonna carry it. Oh, oh, I broke. Okay, I thought this was a wee thing, but yeah, all right, I broke it. I'll carry it. It is a wee thing, but it's a more you than a me thing, so it's a wee like sixty forty. He's gonna put it in his pocket <laughs> and mutter. Pretty sure he's scared of a rock. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the, the cauliflower ears do not pick up anything. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's about something? this point that uh, Mrs. Carmine uh, calls up from downstairs. Uh, uh, t- uh tea's ready. Uh, 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 whenever you're you're done. Two sugars, please. Uh, and now oh. Clarence will head downstairs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just say that I was like that's uh buying an extra moment kind of thing of like uh is there anything else we need to take which i I think we take the whole goddamn journal and all these pages yeah Yeah. no the pages Uh, go into the journal the journal goes uh under the arm for sure and then oh no no sir um paul i think we mentioned this when we were doing the character like building and whatnot um Mm. paul pretty much always carries a, a letter um briefcase uh that uh, has clasps and locks so like he undoes it i think to to put the journal in does does clarence see that it's like actually stone empty uh as we discussed it's not stone empty (laughs) despite not being a businessman and having basically no need for a uh briefcase uh it is full of uh odds and ends um with a good chunk of it uh, consisting of medical supplies, uh, like um, there's gauze, right. there's problems to antiseptic, yeah. there's probably like a, mm-hmm. a rubbing alcohol or something, something to clean wounds with. Um, uh, probably like a small suture kit, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And no, I, re- uh, I recall now. I recall now. Yeah, and the suture kit also is going to double because what is not occupied by sort of medical supplies, there's some papers in there, but barely any. Uh, the rest of it is uh, fishing tackle, actually. Uh, there are just a few hooks. Uh, a couple um, uh, spools of uh, of line and uh, uh, some some lures and sinkers. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. 
So he's you just going to like sort of slide it in there amongst all of that. Okay, so you guys are taking the journal, the crystal. Are you taking anything else out of the room? Uh, so the, yeah, the Rosicrucian manual and that other journal page. Um, and then I, th I think that's it. Those are kind of the standouts. And we both kind of did a, a look around the room. I don't, I feel like after finding that journal, Clarence is going to feel like the work is done. Yeah, I think, um, I give another once over to the, the books, um, other than the journal. And we were saying that, um, there's like a few other sort of esoteric things there, like uh, Egyptian, uh, mm -hmm. like history or mysticism, something like that. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think uh, Paul would make like a note of what's what's over there, um, but I don't think he, I don't think he discovered anything else that he would remove from the the room. Okay. Uh, so you guys can can gather that up, get it in the uh, briefcase with all the medical supplies and tackle and stuff, and oh, yeah. uh, head head downstairs um and you know you guys come down the stairs and uh look you know probably look left or right depending on what's going on but uh to the right uh on the table there is a little platter with three teacups um set up with as well as a um you know tea kettle um sitting there um and she's sitting in one of her chairs and uh as she sees you come down she's like oh oh come on over and and have some tea um, and really, um, you know, sitting down and having the tea, you know, it's not bad tea by any stretch of the imagination. Um, uh, it's also not like the best tea you've ever had. It's just, you know, a nice tea, uh, to sit down and have. And she does have a little, um, she didn't put any sugar in your cup, Paul, but she did bring out like a little, you know, sugar cube holder, um, gotcha. with little tongs yeah. that you could put it in. Um, and you can kind of, make small talk with her, but you don't get uh, much more information out of her in terms of, of this. Um, if there's anything specific you wanted to ask, but she, she really doesn't have much more to, to help with like your investigation that she has available. Yeah, I think, um, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, sip on the tea and, and sort of, uh, have a quiet moment maybe depending on what, uh, Clarence wants to do. Um, Paul will shovel a bunch of cubes into his tea after a, a first sip. <laughs> uh, Clarence is gonna ask her gently you know how how long has she been working at the shop again Mrs. Carmine and now he's read the journal and it's more of like a just sort of a fishing where is Mrs. Carmine at kind of question yep um she'll answer along the same lines that the the journal uh alluded to um, she's been working there for a little while. Um, you know, she doesn't give exactly like what the journal is stating because the journal kind of, you know, mentioned um, when Cedric's brother comes back um, and that type of stuff. Yeah. She just she, she's kind of happy her daughter has a job and, and is talking to some other people and kind of getting out and, and that type of stuff. Sure, sure. Hanging out with kids her own age. I totally understand what. Um... I think how uh, I think Paul would cut in <laughs> real quick and be like, uh, "So how's your daughter been doing since you lost the the pops?" You can you can tell that uh, as soon as you ask that question that that hit a you know a heartstring, um, and she she looks distraught again. Um, the tea seemed to be helping, but now now she's pretty distraught again, and she's well. Uh, it it certainly hit me hard, you know, missing missing my husband. Um, Bobby, you know, her and her and her dad got along pretty well. Um, so she's definitely been sad. Um, I don't think she um it has anything that's uh you know kind of I would say it would be too concerning with someone go grieving for it. Um, I'd say it's hitting me harder than, than her. Would you, would you say, um, hang on, hang on. Let me phrase this right. How well did you and uh, Alfred know the Midweathers? Uh, the Midweathers? Um, 
not not terribly well i i know they own the the flower shop of course because you know poppy poppy let me know that she's she's working there um uh and you know we we know of them in town they're they're um you know they're some of the more more um influential people uh in the in the city okay I feel like that's those those were kind of the fact finders for you know just sort of to to check in and ping the veracity of the journal a mm-hmm. little bit. Yep, yep. And this hey, Clarence uh, feels pretty good. Miss uh, Miss Kami, did the Poppy ever tell you anything about hanging out with like the women's league or anything? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, kinda... She 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 goes there goes there regularly. Um, you in... mentioned it earlier that she knows uh, Fanny, but. Uh... Fanny, sorry. Uh, but uh, I was just wondering how much you know about their relationship. They hang out a whole lot because you know I I know Fanny. She's a good good lady. But uh, just wondering how much what kind of level of interaction. Uh, well, Miss Miss Fanny Boyle. Um, uh, Poppy Poppy's uh, pretty good friends with her. I would say. Um, uh, as you as you guys have probably seen, you know, uh, Poppy uh, wears you know, uh, more modern women's uh clothes i guess i would i would put it as uh she typically wears uh pants um and uh so and is definitely as part is of the right you know as a good hardworking american who don't love a pair of <laughs> pants yeah uh sure sure um and so she's she's at the the you know the local chapter for the women's equal rights league uh, uh regularly so um it, and was one of the places i i was i was hoping i'd find her uh to be honest but i i, I didn't i think as soon as she says women's equals right league uh i think uh just reflexively paul sort of like puts up a fist like in solidarity like the <laughs> world <laughs> Uh, doesn't never like make a big deal of it, but like he's 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 a little bit of an activist. He's a little bit of a like, yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. I was just wondering. Like I said, I'll probably go talk to Fanny myself. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds good. Okay, well, um, thanks for the tea, I guess, uh, Clarence. CW got nothing. No, no, that's all for me. Sounds like it'd be good to speak with Fanny and uh and maybe head over to the flower shop as well. But let's let's start with Fanny and the women's league. Yeah, we'll be back Man. if we find out with anything else for you, Miss Carmine. But uh you got a lovely home and uh you know, um I don't know if I said it before, but I'm sorry about your loss and uh you know, we'll I'm sure we'll find the uh, we'll we're gonna find the uh Poppy before the day's out. I, I put money on it. Oh, that'd be that'd be great, and and she perks up a little bit uh, at you saying that, and um, a little bit of light comes back to her eyes. All right, well, let's go then. I guess okay. Yep. Fine, yep. Is, uh, that's too much silence for me. It's getting awkward. Uh, just like <laughs> yanks Clarence up. Like, yeah, I don't do good in the social situations. I apologize, Miss <laughs> Kami. Uh, let's uh, fucking make like a leaf. All right, Clarence is behind you 100%. He's up. We're heading for the door. Grab the coats. He takes a last look around. Um, I think he's nervous about leaving Miss Carmine to home alone. Uh, just some unnerving things upstairs. Paul is acting a little jumpy here. Uh, definitely a little more awkward than usual. But, you know, we'll head out the door. Okay. Uh, you guys uh, mentioned, you know, Fanny Boyle. Uh, you You know of her um same type of thing in the local area um and you also know um where she lives as well um she could she yeah. could definitely go give her a visit i think i think paul probably knows her like directly mm-hmm. um i think it's entirely possible like that's that's one of the, the character traits that we were talking about earlier is he's uh he's he's gruff on the outside and you know is who he is but um there's he, he does believe in the fight for for equal rights um for all um i think growing up uh, an immigrant of uh, <laughs> of a minority group that faces persecution um it was it's sort of like a no brainer to him just like yeah we're people they're people everybody's people just 
you know, be nice. Um, so I think that's one of the few places that he might spend time on occasion, like not directly because it's, you know, so it's a women's movement, but yeah, probably, you know, help out on occasion, you know, go to the same sort of, uh, uh, I think, I think it's cuter than that. Actually, I think that if they do like um, marches in the street or passing out flyers or something like that, I think he hangs out like on corners nearby just so that like nobody harasses them. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, like, doesn't ever tell them that that's what he's doing. Like, he's not, like, a member or anything like that, but just, like, actually does care about them and what they're doing. And, you know, just like, yeah, no, I just I felt like hanging around. I didn't have anywhere to be that day. So, um, just, well, fancy meeting you on this corner here where you happen to be proselytizing. Or not proselytizing, but uh, uh, demonstrating. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think he's like, let's, let's go talk to Fanny. Okay. Who's the next stop? All right. So you guys. Yeah, she's got a uh, funny name, you know. It's got a name like a pimple on your butt, but you know she's a good lady. <laughs> <laughs> and Fanny Boyle, eh? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh boy. Yep. Uh, so you guys, yeah, you Daniel. guys make it to make it to her place after a little bit. Um, do you guys? It's a it's a little ways away from where you are. Do you have a car to drive there? Do you grab a taxi? How do you how do you get there? Uh, I think we could grab a taxi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it isn't hard to to flag one down here. Uh, pretty quick. You're still close to the you know diner, and there are some running around, so you can get that. Um, and p- give her give them the the address of the you know Fanny Boyle's uh residence, and getting there. Um, her house is you know a gray stone building, uh, in kind of a Greek revival style. Um, making it resemble like a pantheon. Um, and uh, kind of going up to the door, you guys knock at the door, and a daintily dressed maid shows you into the conservatory. Um, like that, Paul, knowing her, um, you can, she's, the maid is, you've seen the maid, and she's seen you, so she's like, oh, 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 come on in. Um, uh, and in the conservatory, there's a pair of naked embracing women stand in the center of a fountain lined with water spewing fish and exotic plants bulge voluptuously out of the raised stone beds. Um, and shortly thereafter, uh, Miss Boyle will walk in uh, and, of course, see both of you and be like, ah, um, well, well, hello. You know, Miss uh, Miss Boyle is polite uh, tall and angular with neatly kept appearance. Um, and she's wearing an Asian inspired lounging costume. Um, and, uh, after, after her greeting, she's like, uh, uh, let's, I, I suppose you need to talk to me about something, but let, let's get some tea. I, I haven't had any yet today. Fanny, sweetheart, we just had some tea, you know, uh, a small cup, maybe. Okay. I need mean, um, something what, what stronger you got? at this point in the day. What do you got, though? You got Earl Grey? Uh, I certainly have some Earl Grey for you. That's my girl. All right. I'm back in. I'm back in. <laughs> and then he, like, okay. nudges Clarence, like, she's got she's got good stuff. Yeah, she does. And he's staring at the statue, but he's staring at the fish and the tile work on the stone floor. I think uh, <laughs> Paul doesn't know that. And he's just, like, just nudges him again. He's like, don't be a perv. Oh, but look at the scales. Look at the detail on these fish. Oh my god, that's even fucking worse. Jesus Christ. Oh, all right. I can't take you anywhere. I could say the same for you as he as he hustles himself towards the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll just we'll just odd couple moment and then follow uh, <laughs> Fanny. Yep. Uh, over over on one side of the room, there's there's a small table, a small sitting table with uh, you know some chairs around it. Um, and shortly thereafter of of mentioning tea, the the maid comes back in, same type of thing, a, a serving tray with some cups and a, a tea kettle and um, some accoutrements to go with it uh, that you could add, um, that type of stuff. And uh, after getting her tea and and getting it prepped, she's like, so so what can I what can I help you gentlemen with? Gentlemen. Hey, uh, yeah, go ahead. 
<laughs> no, that was that was Clarence, <laughs> gentlemen. And then you say, "Go ahead." He goes, uh. "Well, uh, Fanny, I don't know if you've known this, but Mrs. Carmine came to see us this morning, saying that uh, Poppy. Well, I don't know if came to see us is the right. We were at the diner, and she came busting in, in a state, and she said that Poppy's gone missing. You know her little girl, uh, her and uh, Alfred's daughter. Oh, oh, of course. Uh, uh yeah, absolutely." So she said that Poppy's been spending some time with you and maybe uh, spent a little extra time around here. We were just wondering if you knew anything about where Poppy might be. Uh, she said she's been gone two days. Really? Um, she she kind of sits back in her chair and takes a sip of her tea. Um, in fact, I'm going to take a drink of water here. Hold on. This is allowed. <clears throat> and, uh, you know. She's like, well, that's definitely worrying. Um, I, I've, I've got to say, I, we, how to put this uh, politely, um, we definitely were close, uh, but we haven't uh, been as close anymore because, to be honest, Poppy started reading that fake occult stuff, and I, I just, I couldn't. Um, do anything about it um uh you know and she's you thought occult studies were outside the grasp of a modern woman uh hmm and she'll she'll give you a side glance at that what what do you mean by that sir i think it my friend just... here is making a little bit of a uh presumption on the efforts of the movement fanny i think uh you know uh i think what he means to say is uh you know a liberated modern woman is allowed to pursue any sort of uh intellectual endeavors that she might find herself inclined to isn't that right clarence he'll he'll grunt and nod <laughs> yeah. and she'll say i i agree uh you know um to each their own it's it's definitely something though that i'm i'm not quite behind i i guess from a you know an intellectual perspective sure but uh there's there's too much stuff out there that people get their heads into um that just aren't real and and start believing it uh i just think that's weird definitely reasonable definitely reasonable so she started reading into some of these more occult teachings and and you two spent less time together Yep, yep. Uh, you know, she's been hanging out with with Ted and uh, uh, and that type of stuff. Um, so it's been it's been interesting seeing those two together and uh, uh and and Harold. Ugh. Oh, Who's that? Harold's Harold's not a favorite. Who's Harold? Oh, uh, uh Harold is uh, uh Cedric's brother. No. Oh. Hmm. All right. Oh, so Harold, uh, what's that again? Merriweather or something like that? Uh, Midweather. Midweather. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. <laughs> that's the that's the family that owns the flower shop, right? Where where Poppy works. If if we uh, got our yes, notes it, right here from Mrs. Carmine. Yep. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So she's spending a lot of time with Cedric, and uh, and Harold, and how come? What's what's what is it about Harold that makes your skin crawl? That that gentleman uh, thinks like a sheik, to be perfectly. And she, you know, she kind of puffs up, puffs up her chest, and and looks uh, offended uh, when she is saying this. Uh, it, he he thinks like a sheik, and that he can take you know whatever he wants. Uh, in fact, uh, at a social event a while ago when he was still around, um, he tried to assault me. Like he could do whatever whoa. he wanted. Whoa, mm. whoa, whoa! Yeah, we ain't cool with that. And certainly not. Oh, um, what? Uh, was was he having some kind of argument, or was this uh, a little bit more like, uh, you know, is this uh, a man going too far kind of thing? Uh, definitely the latter. And she's. Mm. Oof. 
I see. So uh, it's a bit of a bad egg, eh? Uh, most certainly. Most certainly. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, in fact, uh, of all the audacity, um, Mrs. Midweather, um, they, they uh, and, and Miss Carmine, in fact, for a little bit, uh, were attempting uh, to get me to, to talk to Poppy to convince her to date to date Henry of all, uh, to date Harold of all people. Like, oh, and I, I just couldn't get behind that. I just couldn't get behind that. They want, they wanted to encourage sweet Poppy to leave Flower Boy Hedrick to hang out with his older brother? Yes. Um, Man, let me just say, uh, Fanny, that uh, sort of like this sort of, you know, uh, hierarchical pressure to conform to society's norms is why I support your movement because, you know, these should be free choices. You know, everyone's got to make their own way. Yep. Yep. So I appreciate you and I appreciate you not trying to push her into the arms of some low life, bad egg type. I tell you, we see him. We'll scramble him up. Nice. Uh, she'll, she'll lean in. She, she, because she knows you so well, Paul, um, she wouldn't, you don't think she'd normally divulge this. And she's like, um, it, you know, after, and she's, she's leaning into this. She's like looking around, seeing if anybody's around. The maid is, is standing, you know, 10 feet away. Uh, as and she, she doesn't. In before she can talk, I'm just like, did you get my joke about the egg thing, about the scramble? <laughs> it was good, right? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and she'll, she'll lean into, into the two of you, like, like a conspiratory type of lean in and she'll, she'll kind of whisper. Uh, in fact, uh, for a little bit, I was planning on helping, uh, uh, Poppy and Cedric. Um, they, they had a plan to, uh, frame Harold, uh, the, like you said, bad egg. Um, and, but the, the only problem with it was I was, I was planning on helping them. But she was supposed to show up uh, on the fifteenth, uh, and um, on March fifteenth, and and never did. So nothing ever came of it. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But um, Fanny could tell me, ask me, frame frame him for what? Uh, trying to get him in a little bit of trouble. Do you mind going into some of the details about that plan? Uh, they had mentioned that I needed to to help them out with some stuff. Uh, and uh, after Harold uh, assaulted me, uh, I was I was certainly for it. Um, hmm. And they they wanted me to meet them, uh, and and they never showed up. So. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys did the right thing, at least, and not going to police, because they're a bunch of worthless mooks. So, you know, next time you get some sort of issue with this with another man, if you need some sort of uh, assistance to come true for you, you just, you call, you call Paul Wallace. I I appreciate that. Uh, but as you know, I, I tend to be able to deal with these, these people myself, of course. No, yeah, no, 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 don't. Uh, I don't mean to come off as patronizing. You know, that's not my play here. I always try to check, you know, Clarence, and you could learn a lesson here, try to check your privileges, try to understand the complexities of the situation. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just offering my assistance as a friend. You understand. I know you know, Fanny. Oh, yes, of course. And, and again, not not uh, saying you're doing anything wrong, just making sure you, you remember that. <laughs> and, you know, we all got to get checked from time to time. We all got to make sure we ingrain these lessons. Clarence, I'm looking at you. I know you're an older type. You know, these are slower <laughs> to come around to these ideas. It's all right. You, you know, old dog, new tricks. It can be done. He you... mutters under his breath, pants. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You say something? No, no. Yes, okay. modern women. You, they're, you, they're amazing. you know I'm hot of hearing. He points at like his totally jacked up ears. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, Paul, I know uh, I've seen you around at various places, but if you... You know, Cedric has has come to some of the the women's league meetings. Uh, we have one later this week. If you would uh, like to like to attend, oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to impose. Uh, I'm not the. Yeah, 
I, you know, we we all each got to walk in our own world, Fanny. <laughs> Uh, yep, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, but maybe, absolutely. maybe, you know, I, I might, I might see you there. You know, I don't know. I got a lot of, uh, I got appointments. I think he sort of like shakes his briefcase a little bit. He's like, you know, I'm a busy man, Fanny. Okay. Making moves. Okay. <laughs> and she, she winks at you. Uh, oh yeah. Kind and of... Paul like shudders at the idea of being seen at a women's rally or a women's <laughs> meeting. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Love it. Um, and uh, any anything else I can help you, you gentlemen, with? Uh, I don't know. There's that much. I mean, just to clarify, you know, you guys have been spending time together. And you're familiar, but uh, she's been she's been ducking you lately, and yes. uh, she's been getting into some weird stuff. And you you aren't familiar with the kind of stuff she's been getting into, are you? Oh no! Oh goodness, no. Uh, like I said, uh, I was going to help her before they they just didn't show up, and and uh, I have no interest in a, a cult or or anything like that. Ugh. Yeah, I have more important. That was back in March, doing. right? You're supposed to help in March, and she never they never showed. No, yep. no, yesterday, Paul, the fifteenth. No, no, she said it was in March, right? Yep. And oh. you're supposed to you're supposed to help them frame him in March. Yep, you know. Now, the one thing uh, I have to verify with this, this could be a mistype here on this. So um, I'll I'll make sure to clarify that for next time, uh, for sure. Oh, okay. So that, that just might be an internal uh, error in the, the framework of the, the story. <laughs> yes, it, it very well could be like that. I'm, I'm working through uh, this okay, from okay. The, gotcha. the first because draft of it. <laughs> I'm, I got you. I'm terrible at tracking the dates, but like today's the, the this, in world, it's May 17th. 16th. 16th. It is the 16th. Well, I thought yep. she said March 16th, so I, yep. I distinctly remember you saying March when we talked about it, but I may not have tracked the date properly. Yeah, I may have Either at way, the beginning it's... of this uh, said March and then went wait May, uh, so that, yep, yep. that might no be... worries. Might be. Either way, either way, uh, we'll we'll retcon that part of that conversation didn't happen. He just went. You were supposed to help him and never showed. Cool, yep. got that. Yep. And again, I'll I'll ver- uh, I'll double check that that's that's actually march or if it's supposed to be in may so it would be gotcha. yesterday <laughs> yeah right um that yeah because that those changes things because mm-hmm. yeah it anyway does. um yeah so just like yep you were supposed to help didn't pan out uh they i guess sort of tosses it over to uh to clarence's you got anything no nothing else for me i think that gives us uh a better idea of the relationship here and fanny i'm sure if you knew where where little poppy was uh you'd at least tell us if she was safe and and if she weren't and i know that her mother's very worried so i appreciate you giving us just a little more a little more context and clarity and i think we'll we'll go about our business uh and he knocks back the rest of his tea okay and she's like yes and if, if there's you know, uh, well, I might not uh, uh, be into the occult like Poppy and and seems Cedric are. Uh, I'm I'm certainly worried about her. Not uh, that she's that she's missing. So uh, if it, if there's anything I can do to help, certainly please stop by and and let me know. And of, and of course, we if I hear do. anything, I'll I'll you you two will be the first ones to know. I'm sure Paul would love to stop by with any updates for you. And Clarence is going to stand up. <laughs> uh, can I do a, a quick, uh, maybe like a psychology roll on her, just make sure like everything's sort of face value on the up and up? Go ahead. Yep, absolutely. Well, hey. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> close to being real bad. <laughs> um, but no, I don't. I don't get the the success. Nope. Just a bit. No. Yeah, as far as you can tell, she's she's being straightforward. Um, yeah, uh, Paul will uh, finish sipping his tea and then uh, sort of uh, go to the stand. And uh, yep, awesome. Good. Well, you. with that, we'll as you guys are leaving uh, the Boyle residence, uh, we will break here uh, as it's it's now two hours since our start. Um, mm-hmm. And with that, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we plan on 
playing this uh, next week as well. So we'll continue on with Clarence and Paul trying to figure out what has happened to Poppy next week. So uh, with that, any closing words from, from either of you uh, that you have? No, none here. Uh, I'm pretty darn terrified. I don't like that we broke the crystal. And uh, I love the dynamism that we've got between the NPCs. Clarence is Clarence wants to go home and play with some stone. He doesn't want to go down this rabbit hole. His skin's his skin's crawling. Uh, I got. Uh, uh, I think um, it's. I think it's a good dynamic. Yeah, definitely. I think we've we've established something fun, and. Uh, you know, it's the hooks in for for Paul. Like you may play it off, but you know, there's a, there's a young lady and maybe in trouble. And uh, it sounds like to to him the pieces he's putting together. Like this is this is Harold's fault, and Harold's gonna get what's coming to him. So it was disinterested before, but now it's like, okay, this is a problem I can solve. <laughs> um, and uh, the only thing I have to say is New York City. New York City. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Yup. Awesome, awesome. All right, everybody, have a good night, and we'll talk to you next week where we will continue the Bye. story. Later.